Susie was painfully shy. I never looked at people's faces, only their shoes. That was 20 years ago. Today, Susie gives speeches all the time for Special Olympics. And it's just amazing to see her look into people's face and know who they are. It's been the best experience in our lives, not only as a family, but for her. And that's the power of words. Susie was born on Thanksgiving, and the news was just horrible. It was like you had a, a dream, and the dream wasn't going to come true anymore. When we were first told she had Down syndrome, we didn't know quite what to expect. In the 1960s, uh, children like Susie and other children with uh, intellectual disabilities were told by uh, doctors and, and professionals that they were never going to amount to anything. They were never going to be able to do what any normal person would do, and therefore it was better for them to be institutionalized. The pediatrician that told us says, uh, well, you know, maybe you should just drop her off at a home and leave her there. And we said, no, we can't do that. His comments made me so angry that I was bound and determined she was going to be the best Down syndrome kid that ever hit the face of the earth. We spent a lot of time with her, a lot of effort. Through the years, we gave her opportunities. When she didn't speak, we took her to a therapist. And I could see improvement in Susie every year. But we did that for nine years, and Susie still wasn't speaking. I used to n never really talk, ever. Uh, I was afraid that, that I would s say something wrong and, uh, and everyone would laugh at me. The first time I was aware of how shy she was was when I noticed photographers couldn't make her smile for her pictures. Her head was always down and you know, if she didn't feel like talking to you, she wouldn't. She'd write notes. She was one who was not much of the spoken word, uh, but she was a lot about the written word. And her mother was about the only thing in her life. She didn't really care if anyone else was around. If mother was there, everything was great. And when you think of what your family went through to get her to this point and the sacrifices that all of us had made for her, that was very sad. That was very sad. But then there was Special Olympics. And when that happened, what a change. My favorite sport is golf. I love golf. Unified golf is where you pair a special Olympian with a non-special Olympian. Tom and Susie on the golf course are just something else. She thought he was going to be her best chance at gold medals. Susie is very competitive. The medal count is very big for her. And uh, I always kid her, you know, it's time for you to win me another medal because whatever she gets, I get. He is very supportive and he's very sweet. Tom makes me laugh. She's uh, written him a golf manual, <laughs> which he always carries. And he also calls her his fourth daughter, which to me is very special. Special Olympic athletes are so amazing. They are heroes to each and every one of us. The commitments that they make, the things that they achieve, gosh, how can you not be inspired by what they do? Susie has such a unique story and is so inspiring from where she came from in, you know, not really speaking a whole lot and sharing her thoughts via messages to taking the love that she has for what she does through sport and sharing it with people. It's the complete opposite ends of the continuum and uh, it has been just a growing stage for her ever since then. I learned a whole lot more than just golf. Special Olympics helped me find my voice. 
I can remember seeing the article in the newsletter from Special Olympics that they had a global messenger program thinking, wow, would I love that for Susie, but that'll never happen. A global messenger is a person who gives speeches about Special Olympics. So when they asked her, if we both thought, what? Can she do that? I, can, I don't think she can do that. Susie decided in three days that that was what she would like to do, and I said, if you're gonna do it, you have to call them and tell them you'll do it. And a couple days later, she did. That was the beginning of a wonderful story. I think uh, the big part of the Global Messenger program is identifying who these athletes are that are going to be interested in, in speaking about their experiences and you can tell when they're participating in their sports and they're training and they're competing that they have that passion and that they would love to talk about it and same with Susie when uh, she was asked if she wanted to be a Global Messenger and her parents you know had said no that this probably wouldn't be a good fit for her it wasn't until after they got through the program and she gave her first few speeches that they realized that maybe this really was a great fit for her and, and they were the ones that were at a loss of words. When she gave her speech, everyone just mouth flopped open. They couldn't believe it came out of her. Oh, jaws dropped, you know. They all wanted their pictures taken with her. They were all hugging her. She was all smiles. She was loving it. It was wonderful to watch and it was wonderful to see it explode finally. I was scared and shy, but now I have made many friends and one Lots of gold medals. It's through these experiences that the athletes develop self-confidence to do better in their jobs, in the sports that they're currently training in, and to do better as global messengers. The more they do, the more they want to do. It's very interesting. I have friends who live out in the area where she works, and they always tell me about how pleasant Susie is when they go into the place where she works. And without Special Olympics, I don't think that she would be that way. I think that Special Olympics has brought this out in her. Special Olympics is one of those organizations that clearly does make a difference for the individuals who participate and in the community, and for those people who are really privileged enough to be able to witness the incredible challenges and the incredible achievements of the athletes. The ability that the athletes have to take their experiences and put them into words that they can share with people is quite a talent and it's not easy for most of us to do, let alone, you know, athletes that have had challenges in speaking like Susie has. I can now see her do things that I don't think that I would ever have the ability to do. She can stand up in front of two to three thousand people and talk to them and look them in the eye. So she's gone from a girl of one or two words to a girl of thousands of words in front of thousands of people. Through the Global Messenger Program, a higher level of tolerance, a higher level of acceptance, and a greater appreciation of Special Olympics is gained. What a difference it can make in our communities and society at large. When the doctor told us Susie had Down syndrome, we didn't know what to expect, yet as time went by, we realized that our dream was just taking a different direction, and in actuality, it's a better direction. It's a great direction, one that I wouldn't have missed, a journey I wouldn't have missed. These have been some of the best memories of my life, playing golf with her. Special Olympics makes me feel good about myself and I love public speaking. When I look at her now, I'm the one who's speechless.